Sometime part way into the third millennium, something extraordinary happened. Long had our culture worshipped the noble hero, a protagonist who never lost their courage and hope in the face of despair. We needed these characters to show us that the fight is never lost, that there's good in this world, and, and it's, it's worth fighting. The stories were secondary, the flashy fights weren't the point, we were there because our heroes inspired us. We were there to see Batman, Superman, the Jedi. We were there to imagine something better, something more than we were. But then something in our culture broke. The protagonists of our stories became almost unrecognizable echoes of what they once were. I used to be. Gone was their optimism, their hope for a better tomorrow. Destroyed was their faith in humanity, in the potential for pure goodness we have within us. Our heroes became broken, just as we are broken. This is not Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is a broken shell of the hero we once knew. This is not Bruce Wayne. Bruce let himself fade away until only vengeance remained. This is not Superman, the absolute pinnacle of respect and honor, who would never seek revenge. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. Wanda Maximoff has been broken beyond redemption. We loved seeing Logan broken, Professor X broken, Jean Grey broken. We raved about the Joker, and yet he was beyond broken. Thor withdrew into a bottle, Hulk got too scared to fight, Hawkeye becomes a violent killer, the new Captain America goes insane, Han abandoned his wife and son and Luke. What is happening to our heroes? Are these characters a reflection of us, or are we becoming a reflection of them? Please say hello to me. Please say hello to me. Yes, there are some valuable, rare examples. Some protagonists still are heroes we can idolize. They don't give up, don't give in, don't stop giving. They make us believe in hope, believe in love, believe in a better tomorrow. But still, Something terrible has happened to our stories. We idolize the brokenhearted, the lonely, the selfish, the rule breakers, and dirtiest talkers. We have replaced justice with vengeance. The idols we worshipped have fallen. Loyalty is dead, nobility is dead, peace, joy, and hope are dead, our heroes are... I am not well adjusted. I am barely keeping it together. I'm just a grown man who can't even look his own friends in the eye for too long because I'm afraid that they'll see that I am broken. I don't make mistakes. I'm not just like the rest of you. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm better. I am better. I'm the real hero. I'm the real hero. But it doesn't have to be this way. Characters can feel realistic without leaving the audience wallowing in depression. They can feel hopeless without losing hope, lose the fight and still be proud. Characters can get knocked down time and time again and still get back up to fight they can trust that their friends have their back. Even when they can't trust themselves. They can be leaders worth following. We all fail. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human. And heroes can feel sadness without letting that sadness define them. 
falling so slow like fragile tiny shells drifting in the foam if you only eat fatty foods you will get fat if you only spend instead of invest you will be poor and if you only see portrayals of broken protagonists you will feel broken as well and this is not a new problem I hear so many young people today talk about a world that's emptied of heroism, where there are no more noble things to do. What do you say to them? Everybody becomes, everybody has the choice of being a hero or not being a hero every day of their lives. And you can either help somebody, you can be compassionate toward people, or you can treat some people with dignity, or not. And. In one way, you become a hero, and the other way, you know, you're part of the problem. And it's it's not a grand thing. You know, you don't have to uh, get into a giant laser sword fight and blow up three spaceships to become a hero. I mean, it's a very small thing that happens every day of your life. Great, I'm in no position to tell anyone how to live, but sneaking out like this, quitting, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Why do we folks? so that we can learn to pick ourselves up. It just got too hard. It's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. So what happened to our heroes? Maybe it's all a conspiracy, and Hollywood is intentionally trying to keep us depressed. To show us there are no true heroes. Maybe lower our expectations of our politicians and our world leaders. Or maybe the problem is us. Embracing the broken, cheering the wicked. We're bad guys. It's what we do. Yes, these characters feel realistic. Because life is difficult and people are struggling. But there is still good in this world. And each one of us can make a difference. America's in trouble. I think we can all agree on that, right? It's teetering on the edge. But we've been given these amazing gifts. How do we use them to help our country get back on its feet? Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Stop lowering yourself every time somebody pisses you off. Be better. The only power I have is that I believe we can do better. My faith's in people, I guess, individuals and I'm happy to say that for the most part, they haven't let me down. It's not your fault. Which is why I can't let them down either. In their book, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, Moore and Gillette write, ours is not an age that wants heroes. Ours is an age of envy in which laziness and self-involvement are the rule. Anyone who wants to shine, who dares to stand above the crowd, is dragged back down by his lackluster and self-appointed peers. They hate me. They hate you. 
They hate us. We identify as broken, as lonely, as worthless, and we'll do everything we can to keep others down with us. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. All right? All right. You got a dream? You got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you you can't do it. You want something? Go get it. Period. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. Our presence automatically liberates others. We see someone who is actually noble and we all try to find flaws, try to break them down, try to prove that we don't have to strive to be better because better doesn't exist. Not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. To paraphrase Thomas Jefferson, when we hear stories of noble people, we want to be noble ourselves. Likewise, when we hear stories of people being selfish and evil, we can aspire towards those qualities just as easily. Humans need stories of heroes. We need pure nobility that we want to imitate. I'm not a man. I used to be. The, the issues of friendship and loyalty are, are very, very important. Uh, to the way we live our lives. But it's not common knowledge among young people. You know, they're still learning, they're still picking up ideas, they're still using these ideas to shape uh, the way they're gonna conduct their life. And you need to tell the same story over and over again every generation, so that generation gets it. And I think we've gone for a few generations where a lot of the sort of more basic stories uh, have fallen by the wayside. And what do stories do for us in that sense? What are myths? They try to show us our place. Myths help you to have your own hero's journey, find your individuality, find your place in the world, but hopefully remind you that you're part of a whole and that you must also uh, be part of the community and, and think of the welfare of the community above the welfare of yourself. If you're a sports fanatic, you practice every day so you could be as great as Joe Montana or Muhammad Ali. If you're a gamer, you might aspire to be the next Mango. If you're a filmmaker, you might revere Spielberg. If you're a trombone player, you admire Joseph Alessi. If you're a young boy, your father is your undisputed hero you'd follow anywhere. In this article from Psychology Today, Dr. Scott Allison writes, People need heroes because heroes save or improve lives and because heroes are inspiring. But we also need heroes for surprising reasons that go beyond the direct benefits of heroic action. Heroes elevate us emotionally. They heal our psychological ills. They build connections between people. They encourage us to transform ourselves for the better and they call us to become heroes and help others. Lord knows kids like Henry need a hero. Courageous, self-sacrificing people, setting examples for all of us. Everybody loves a hero. People line up for them, cheer them, scream their names, and years later they'll tell how they stood in the rain for hours just to get a glimpse of the one who taught him to hold on a second longer. I believe there's a hero in all of us that keeps us honest, gives us strength, makes us noble, and finally allows us to die with pride. You'll have to make difficult decisions. 
You'll have to decide if you'll take the easy way or go the extra mile. And sometimes you'll have to be okay with incredibly hard work going unnoticed and not getting the recognition you deserve. It's not about deserve. It's about what you believe. The heroic protagonist has been fading away. But we as consumers can do better. We need to stop identifying ourselves as broken and start imagining ourselves as heroes again. What happened to our heroes? We choose to ignore them. We choose to pretend that it's better to be selfish. We choose shoplifting over honesty. We choose fear over bravery. We choose hate over compassion. Choose to shift blame off ourselves and onto another. From war to robbery to murder, every evil that we face is because someone made a choice to be a villain instead of a hero. I'm tired of people being ugly to each other. I'm tired of all the pain I feel and hear in the world every day. There's too much of it. It's like pieces of glass in my head all the time. I pick up garbage for a living, pal. Things start to fall apart when you stop caring, and I stopped caring a long time ago. Choosing to be a hero is such a simple thing. It doesn't mandate self-sacrifice or personal suffering. Charles, we need you to hope again. Dr. Von Braun's a great scientist, but he isn't my hero. Do the words give up mean anything to you? Not a thing. I see pride. Can I hear you? I see power. I see a badass mother who won't take no crap off of nobody. Once again! I see pride! Junior! I see power! I see a badass mother who won't take no crap off of nobody. That's right. Heroism simply means having strong morals and deciding every day that you are a person who will stick by those morals. Your story may not have such a happy beginning, but that doesn't make you who you are. It is the rest of your story. Who you choose to be. Guns kill. And you don't have to be a gun. You are what you choose to be. You choose. Choose. You said it was enough to be a man. But there's better than man. There's gods. And the rest of us. What are we? They're giants. We're what they step on. I know. I've seen giants up close. But the good ones, the real deal, they're not heroes because of what they have that we don't. It's what they do with it. You're right, Mike. It matters who you are. A single mom who's working two jobs and still finds time to take her kid to soccer practice, that's a miracle. A teenager who says no to drugs and yes to an education, that's a miracle. People want me to do everything for them. What they don't realize is they have the power. You want to see a miracle, son? Be the miracle. As I was finding the Superman clips for this video, I happened to find these beautiful comments, real people exactly echoing what I've said so far. The first person says the world needs a Paragon hero, meaning someone who is perfect, not flawless in their skills, but flawless in their strength of heart and of character. Patrick replies that we need someone or something to be a beacon of hope, whether real or fiction. There's no guidance in the world anymore. 
no one for young people to aspire to be. I hear so many young people today talk about a world that's emptied of heroism, where there are no more noble things to do. The next person points out that when heroes do pop up in real life, they're snuffed out or compromised very quickly. Anyone who wants to shine, who dares to stand above the crowd, is dragged back down by his lackluster and self-appointed peers. Women can't be knights. Why not? Tradition. Tradition. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. And the last comment wisely points out that heroes can't save us. They can only inspire us to save ourselves. It's time for you to look inward and begin asking yourself the big questions. Who are you? And what do you want? Kill me! No! God knows I want you, but you don't get to destroy who I am! Everyone is telling you that something wrong is something right. Even if the whole world is telling you to move, it is your duty to plant yourself like a tree, look them in the eye and say, no, you move. Everybody has the choice of being a hero or not being a hero. I mean, it's a very small thing that happens every day of your life. I'm your king. You don't have to be the bad guy. You are the most talented, most interesting, and most extraordinary person in the universe. And you are capable of amazing things because you are the special. And so am I. It's about all of us. Right now, it's about you. And you still can change everything. We have chosen not only to believe in ourselves, but in each other. Today, there's not a man or woman in here that shall stand alone. Let's decide together to do better. We can each be heroes every day just by showing kindness, empathy to others' pain, and our bravery to keep on fighting when you want to give up. Heroes aren't gone. No matter your size or gender or race, heroes are everywhere around you. We just need to believe in them. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you.